Steve Alcorn's a fine investigator. Oh, fuck off. This is the Bordian Slip with your host, Chris York. I don't I don't need porn, Chris. I have a good woman. Listen, I have a I well. have a good woman. I still watch porn. Co-host, Steve Alcorn. You are the top shit in Bigfootery if you get the invitation. Oh, are you? I've gotten the invitation two years in a row now, Chris. Wow. Not me. And sometimes special guest, Matt Knapp. It's part growing older, you know? Maturing. Maturing. Uh, uh. Uh-huh. Getting more <laughs> dignified and stuff. <laughs> okay, George Washington. <laughs> I opted for the, uh... Is that what meth addicts say? <laughs> that make me more dignified. <laughs> Taking on all things strange since 2013. Wait a minute. I don't know what the hell Are we're you doing. saying that he's pregnant? Possibly. Was he implanted by one of these teenage aliens? <laughs> Didn't that happen to Arnold? Uh, this di- device, which comes as part of Nintendo's Quality of Life initiative, is to... Is going to have Quality kids running around banging, banging their, their heads head. off bricks. <laughs> yeah. You're about to witness the strength of creep knowledge. Hiya, folks, and welcome to the 40 and Slip. This is episode 97, the Everybody Bailed on Chris episode. <laughs> uh, I guess Steve had had some kind of Thanksgiving merriment, uh, fun time, happy hour going on today, and uh, then Booty called, and... He couldn't make it for this evening. Uh, Matt is uh, battling an Ebola outbreak in Oklahoma. We're hoping he'll make it out all right. Everything's happening in Oklahoma. They have tornadoes, earthquakes, an Oklahoma octopus. That's the he, he's, a br- he's a brave, brave man. That, that's the one, David that really gets me is the Oklahoma octopus. (laughs) (laughs) Like, really? Did we have, do we have to make that stretch that there's an Oklahoma octopus? Although I do, (laughs) although I do like to make fun of Matt and tell him that he has to believe in it because he's from Oklahoma. Which makes sense to me. I mean, once you're you know, you're wrapped up in the the Oklahoma cryptid world, you have to believe in everything. Everything, no questions. That's right. Uh, so joining uh, the show uh, in place of both gentlemen, filling both shoes, if you will, this evening <laughs> is David Batdorf. <laughs> I got two feet. <laughs> yeah. You get some fucking shoes to fill. Can you mm-hmm. can you stutter and fuck up and throw out really great lines at the same time? I'm famous for doing both. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> although although Alcorn, we were off we were actually off air. And Alcorn threw out one of the greatest lines I think he's ever thrown out. And of course it was fucking off air. Uh, we we were waiting for Matt, and so Matt's microphone was just on. He had gone off to do something else, and <clears throat> some people in his house are talking, and they stopped, and all of a sudden, Steve goes, Hey, can you hear my TV? <laughs> <laughs> Which is fucking hilarious. If anyone, you know, for anyone who's listened to this fucking show, because that son of a bitch, you can hear everything in the background in his house when he's fucking doing the show. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I I had tried to hook up with those guys today. Couldn't do it. Um, 
so I uh, David had messaged me. Oh God, you'd messaged me a while ago about doing doing a show, doing it down the rabbit hole. But I said fuck it tonight when you messaged me, and then everything went to shit on the other end. And I said just fucking, we'll just do the forty and slip. Fuck it. Why not? Why uh, not? <laughs> and, and we'll make yeah. and we'll make it because I I've I've made no bones about it over the the years is I I like to do shows all over the spectrum and that's why I started doing the shows with you to give me that ability to to talk about things that I wouldn't necessarily talk about on the show with those guys exactly and it gives me the same opportunity you know I come from a Sasquatch based show and sometimes you can't just talk about Sasquatch I got other pseudoscience <laughs> to, to delve into <laughs> right and I, I, I you know what was funny we were talking about recently on the show and I wanted to fucking uh, get back with you on it is that I fucking called it on the Koi Wolf this yeah totally <laughs> the the fucking now it's like this big thing everybody's talking about how this you know this now apex predator koi wolf is just fucking taking over the northeast and and the pro you know, like you know from the ground floor what, what we talked about that almost last year you know it, uh which nobody was really they hadn't really funded or talked about the studies it was like the first little bits of information that came out and drumming up money for the studies to really feel feel out how big that uh you know th that thing was but it's it's taking off and it's really cool and it is looking at um you know a factor of evolution in action it's possible the koi wolves can explode expand and then its population will collapse and reintegrate into coyotes and wolves but forever in that area, coyotes and wolves will be changed, and that's part of the way that it works. It's, well, the thing it's that com it's complicated, and it's not a line that you can look at it on a branch of a tree, but it's very important. Well, the thing that that fascinates me about it more so than the um, coyote wolf mix is the fact that some dog breeds that were interbred in there as well have given them. A, a sort of a courage with people and that's the scary part of the koi wolf yeah the first the you know in the first breedings that we that we did was to find the animals obviously the first animals that we were going to be able to do this with um or or domesticate or even befriend before you call it domestication were the ones that were more amicable towards people um or didn't have the innate fear and so by breeding in domesticated dogs, they're going to start losing that fear. That will possibly cause more of a problem than simply the, the two wild species, uh, you know, breeding. Yeah, I mean, I let's be honest. I mean, coyotes are all over the place. You're never going to see them. They're, they're not a problem unless you try to put chickens outside up against a wood line. You know, like, that's, yeah. that's, that's, it, that's it, the, the They're, they're not, the they don't want to fuck with us. <clears throat> Their, no, their uh, general, they'd, they'd rather, their, their they'd general rather inclination to is to fucking avoid us. Yep, There's, at all costs. Yeah. I mean, you deal with them where you live. I deal with them here. And mm -hmm. at this point, I don't even know if it's it's that I'm dealing with coyotes at this point. And I want to set up a trail camera around my house because I hear them sons of bitches out there. And I'm wondering if they're, you know, if they're coyotes or if it's koi wolves. In your area, there's a good potential because you're in that the the area that crosses in between yeah. the, the the gray wolf territory. You know, I know exactly what I'm looking at because I'm I'm low enough in elevation and far enough away from where there could even potentially be wolves. Um, but uh, anyway, that that it, it's a really really fascinating, and you should I I would say if you if you have the oh, means they, to they definitely procure, come through acquire can, a trail cam you should definitely try to figure it out i mean that that that's that would be an interesting thing we like can look, hear we can too. hear them all the time like i'll go out in the uh, in the night sometimes to let the dogs out and i'll fucking i'll get the dogs right back in the house like immediately mm -hmm. i'll be like in 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 get the fuck in the house you know, and then I'll sit out there and I'll listen and see where they're going because there's a field that kind of it's uh uh, kind of diagonally across the road from our property and you can hear them come through there late at night sometimes hunting and it's it's eerie sounding 
It is fucking eerie sounding. But be that as it may, on to uh, bigger and better. Well, I don't know if it's better things. Um, it's but things. It's things. Yeah. So you uh, initially you had messaged me about the uh, Rupert Murdoch purchase of National Geographic, basically the Fox. Is it the Fox conglomerate? Is that is that what yeah, the fuck it yeah. is? He he has control over the Fox conglomerate, uh, and was <clears throat> yeah had recently um, for well uh, where where even is that that was uh, it was for seven hundred and twenty five million dollars has uh, procured the right to at right and uh, so and control of the media assets. Uh, for National Geographic. Now, that's important for a lot of reasons, but I wanted to start off with like the fact that what I what I really wanted to talk about was this quote unquote war on science, um, which is something that's actually not quoted in in the U.S. U.S. doesn't have a war on science um, necessarily. We have more of a war like science is warring against everything else, right? But Canada has actually gone through the process and just recently um, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister has re re relieved a gag order. They've completely muzzled all of their government scientists from talking about the work that they're doing so the government can control which which articles publish and which articles don't based upon um, their political means, which is obviously totally against all the principles of science and has completely gagged them all. There is a legitimate war on science being waged in Canada that was just recently it had come to a head and people want to know what the scientists know in Canada um, and uh, it, it's been really interesting to watch you know I'm close enough to where we get all the same news um, and, and just just being in proximity up where I live in the northwest corner of Washington um, and it's it's insane that all of this information that's coming out just recently um, Parliament is completely blocked and people are just like opening their eyes and going holy crap This was the biggest government cover-up that's ever happened and I just you know I, I think about it and yes, it can happen to us too now the the most important thing to remember is that there's the, the love of people for a conspiracy theory, right? Like conspiracy theory is, 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 is ingrained in all of this. We want something bigger to explain a lot of things that are happening. Now, this is not a conspiracy theory. This was an actual conspiracy. This is an, act this is an actual, no, this is an actual thing. And, and I hate to feed into any of those conspiracy theories or conspiracy, conspiracy theorists. I, I, mm -hmm. I love a good, I, and, don't get me wrong. I love a good conspiracy. I love oh, yeah. a good fucking story. But he here's the thing. Canada has... This is has been happening. And not only has this happened in Canada... Uh, I was just recently talking with someone about this as well, which is kind of related to the whole idea of uh, uh, muzzling people about things that maybe we shouldn't be. Um... And that's the Highway of Tears incidents, the 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 disappearances that have happened, and the fact that the Canadian government covered it up, and it was a fact. Like that, that that's like that's come out that that happened. You know, so the, these things happen. Like conspiracy uh, or conspiracy like things happen. And when, I'm not saying that they don't or that, you know, uh, governments don't do shady shit. But to just go, everything's a fucking conspiracy every time, that's where I think there's the fucking problem. But this thing that, that Canada's doing with their scientists or was doing with their scientists, which has now been released. And by the way, by the way, before I let you get back to it, David, uh, fucking kudos to Canada for fucking the legalization of weed. Kudos, and by that I mean those little chocolate granola bars that I used to get as a kid. They were fucking wonderful, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, again, the, the, we'll talk about conspiracy in, in another right pretty soon. But then there's the out outright like 
global conglomerate just buyout of National Geographic. Uh, R- Rupert Murdoch, uh, this is something that was, uh, very near and dear to me, part of my childhood, part of why I grew up wanting to learn about science, why I wanted to gr- grow an open mind and learn about For me, things. me, David, it was seeing naked titties on like the, well, the African tribal women for the first time. <laughs> A little column A, a little column B. <laughs> but uh, but so, so, like, maybe that's what drew me in, and then I stayed for the science, right? Yeah, hey. and so, so Rupert Murdoch uh, comes in, and, and the, 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 they buy this thing out. So sep- the septem- in September 9 is when this came out, um, this article I'm looking at right now. Um, National Geographic gives Fox control of media assets in 70, uh, $725 million deal. The September issue of National Geographic, I have all three of these sitting upstairs. I haven't read the third one because it just came out, the December issue. Uh, or uh, Yes, so September was out. November came out very shortly after this. So obviously Rupert Murdoch had nothing to do with this. So the controlling instruments, the, the, that, that w- publication was already in the pipeline. Two days later, an issue comes out. This is not the Fox News issue. It On the cover said almost human and had a photograph of a recreation of homo naledi the most recent ancient hominid uh found in in south africa i i bought it immediately just because of the covers like oh i need to read all of that i need all of that so the following one that came out so this is september this happens november ish uh september this happens october issue comes out it's about an ancient hominid the November issue comes out in October, as things normally do, and it says, cool it with a picture of the Earth. Rupert Murdoch has been and always will be an, uh, a hardened climate change denier. And basically, the articles were good. There was good information in the, in the subtext, but every inlay was basically, don't worry about it. It's fine. Things are cool. We'll get over it. It's not really affecting anything. They're not talking about, they're talking about how its effect on people, which will, of course, be less because we're ingenious and ingenuitive and not talking about its, about the planet and the impact or if how anybody, it happened. If anybody like doesn't that. think that there's an impact by people on the planet, just fucking take a look at the skies of LA. Yeah. Okay. So, so. <clears throat> That was the first issue, was that. The next issue just came out, the December issue, hit the shelf not too long ago. I think it was this last Friday. And it just says Mary, and it has a picture of a stained glass Virgin Mary. Um, and it says the most, uh, the most influential woman in history. I'm like, you just, no, you do. Where, where, where are my elephants? Where is my, where is my science? Where is National Geographic? You just went from your your climate views to your religious views in the first two issues. It's ridiculous. That's not a that, that that's not a, a cover up. That's being completely overt. And your your takeover is basically now to shut down National Geographic. I basically I I, I unsubscribe from everything that I had, and I was just done. Nobody will want to touch national and, geographic. And, and what and, and what you're and the things that you're talking about, you're not the only one who I've heard saying these things. I've heard this um, in from through other pipelines uh, of people talking about this. It's it, it, it it's a very obvious. Mm-hmm. You know, and, no, yeah, and 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 the thing about Rupert Murdoch is. You know, he, he hasn't been the chairman for very long. It's only been the last, like, three years-ish that um, he's been in charge of, of Fox, which I would say is probably the worst three years in Fox. He is also uh, touted as being the father of tabloid news. Um, you know, like if, if you go down in his Wikipedia here, which I do have up, there was a, uh, a really great, uh, uh, yeah... Or is it 1964 and 72? Yes, yes, it is. 1972 was basically his first tabloid newspaper, being the father of tabloid news. Basically making stuff up well, to make Well, he does money. have Bill O'Reilly on his channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he gets added to the list of, of climate change deniers. And 
just a quick search. I, I can't. There was a, a Huff Post <laughs> blog thing, and like, like it's it's amazing how much information there is out there, and how many people are are legitimately, you know. That, so there's, you know, Exxon bankroll anti global warming. Uh, think tanks, yada yada yada. The the GOP's faith based climate, um, the seven myths about uh, propping up fossil fuels. There, there are people that are talking about this on the other side too. But that's also just to drum up news. Uh, the most priceless one to me, however, was basically when when <laughs> the current Pope stood up and said, "No, this is a big deal." Like, so he goes to Washington, D.C., um, not to support our president, not to support anything, because that's not what he does. He goes all over the, the, the world and stands up and talks about climate change and basically tells <laughs> the GOP asked him to, to talk. And he came out and basically said, shame on you for ignoring this based upon your religious views, because this has nothing to do with religion and everything to do with politics and money. And... Uh, <clears throat> Money. Uh, by the way, Rupert Murdoch is the third. And of course, they're gonna they're gonna glaze right over that, as with everything else. The, it'll be forgotten. It'll be you know, it's it's so, it's the soup du jour of the day, man. Y- you so, know that so, just as well as I do. Oh no, exactly. And and no, nobody remembers any of the things that the the Pope said on his visit. Um, just recently, you know, I was going back through a bunch of old stuff trying to find links for this show, and yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a religious man, but I really liked what the current pope had to say on his last visit to the United I'm, States. I'm not, a, I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual person. I would say, I, I, but I like, I like the tone of this pope. Mm-hmm. I like a pope that says, "No, I don't want all that extravagant shit." I I like a pope that says, "No, I don't need to stay in the fucking pope fucking room, the suite. I'll just stay mm-hmm. in the little fucking room that I've been staying in. I, I'll drive around in a fucking Fiat instead of the fucking pope mobile with fucking bulletproof glass." Like yeah. <laughs> he, he at least, you know. While I don't agree with all of his ideologies, and you know, I I, I definitely disagree with him on a lot of things. Uh, he is a, a a pope that I can at least respect. He's going so he's going a lot further to uh, to appealing to 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 people who don't. Who who only yeah he he's gone away from the, the the thought processes of his predecessors in in the papacy and he's gotten to a point where he's willing to say okay science has some merit there's a there is this climate change there are some some bad things that we're doing yada yada and and that has to, a lot to do with his background was in in the sciences and that that that's what I really like about. It by him too he, he very pragmatic in the way that he looks at things in that in that right but so yeah national geographic rupert murdoch 33rd most richest man on the face of uh well in the u.s he is worth more than 12.7 billion dollars uh 725 million is a drop in the bucket to to purchase this out and do what he wants with it and and he's a you know he's a climate change denier you'd be surprised how many people are willing to argue the the, the the human aspects of climate change. Yes, there is a warming and cooling of the planet that happens. But if you look at if you looked at the last, you know, because I've done this for a lot of reasons, um, mostly related to Sasquatch. But if you look at the last six million years and the actual temperature differences that they're talking about, what's happening now is unprecedented in the last six million years. So, I I don't know. Anyway, um, well, well, the th- the thing is, is we don't know. I mean, we really don't. If if you think about it. it, do I like my my big thing is, do I think we have an impact on the planet? Yes, we absolutely do. 
You, you look at the fucking shit we pump into the air, and while, you know, some people will say, hey, well, we're just a natural thing on this planet too, so, you know, we're just doing what we naturally would do. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. We are. But <laughs> no, well, but that well, might so- be, but that thing might be fucking up the planet. The natural thing to do would be to completely... So here's um, my... Fa- uh, it was actually... Um, uh, oh, who, who was it? It was the... Uh, the no, not governor of California, but uh, somebody else. Anyway, <laughs> somebody so um, else. somebody else, a, a climate denier was, was had come to, to a conference that they were at and, and had stood up and, and was speaking and said, show me the evidence... And so um, that the the the, per, the, the person the, the from California, <laughs> which I remember who this was. Sorry, there's so much recall that has to happen here. Uh, <laughs> actually provided them with with 32 gigabytes of data that was the most recent, um, you know, from from like NATO's most recent. <laughs> Like uh, their conference, the 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 co- conference for gra- global change. This is okay. Here is the data. There's no way that one person can even read that, you know, or understand it in a lifetime. But since you asked for it, here it is in an overwhelming form, um, and, and in a presentation that you have to have a doctorate to, to even scrape into. And then you still don't understand it because you're they're still working on it. But there is a the anthropogenic climate change is a real thing and to deny that is basically to to say that science which if we want to define science we'll do this after this conversation like science is conspiring against us against our culture against our industry against our you know all these it's science is conspiring against us to to their own means now what fucking means <laughs> are they talking about so science is not a thing like science is a process it's a check and balance system to keep us from talking about bullshit when somebody says well you can scientifically prove proof is very important you know scientific you can hypothesize you can do all sorts of things well there's a paper that's submitted for peer review no fuck all that when it gets published and when it becomes proof then it's a thing. Well, that's become a thing. So denying it is basically you're, you're, you're trying to convince the scientific community, which are a bunch of people that hold themselves accountable to this system of tools so that they're not spreading bullshit um, to be able to tell you that, hey, this is how it is. There is no way of getting around it because we've gone through this process. We cannot deny that this is true so what we're saying here in this paper is true it can be small parts of a thing it can be like a big part of a thing but you take a lot of small parts and you put it together it's a big fucking thing and it's true and <laughs> that's what drives me so crazy is that it, you know it, it's people don't want to oversimplify it well oh well i can i can write off that one study well what about the 17 others that back it up you know, or the talk about all the things that you're saying. Well, there's a whole a hole in data here and a hole in data here. Well, no, there's other studies that have shared that up. And so you can come to an overall conclusion that anthropogenic global warming is a thing. Um, and I don't know. So so people are trying to buy their way out of that. And it's amazing well, that National David, Geographic... David, people have that. been trying to buy their way out of the the actual history of the planet for a real long time. I mean, I look yeah. at, uh, for, and I've brought this up many times on the show, I look at Gobekli, Go, I think it's Gobekli Tepe, I think is how it's pronounced, but that fucking place, they've been able to carbon date it because it was buried. And they know it was buried. That it was like intentionally buried by people of the time and that yeah. thing, and it predates everything by like tens of thousands of years like it's it doubled the fucking history of humanity on the planet just by its existence 
you know so it, it's people want to deny shit all the time and even scientists want to deny shit sometimes well so scientists are are that, that's part of their job is when somebody says well i think this is the thing and here's my study that says that well wait not so fast because science is the process of checks and balances correct right? so so the the first something will come out and like well not exactly because and then they'll hone it down to say okay well this part of it was not exactly as it was stated or in this article or whatever but that's where the problem of what happens is when people start to report on this stuff you get everything gets twisted people reporters aren't held accountable to have a paleoanthropology degree you know like that the, they just write about what you know, and and then the op-ed comes in and a little bit of this that and the other they take a thing out of context and then all of a sudden we want to clone neanderthals right <laughs> no a guy just said I think I know a process of how we can do it, but it would take a really amazing, you know, subject to to take on this task, you know, to, to actually give birth to a Neanderthal, right? Like a, a human woman. Uh, but no, they're not planning on doing that. No, that's not not what he was saying at all. He's just saying, I think I know how I can do it. But it would make for a really good science fiction movie. Exactly. <laughs> and, but. Uh, and yeah, let, let, let the uh, let that play out in science fiction as to whether that's right or wrong. But so yeah, I mean, people want to deny things all the time. I, I actually like had a, a, just to remind me a, a link to the Creation Museum, and a gentleman. I actually watched the entire, which is amazing because it's like a two hour uh, two hour debate. Um, the Bill Nye uh, debates the the gentleman, the the owner, and procure uh the curator of the creation museum in Mo melbourne australia talking about the ark and talking about all of these other things um and talking about a young earth and he's got a ton a ton of people who are willing to to, to buy memberships to come and support his task of teaching a young earth to our children which <laughs> I mean, to me, totally boggles my mind. Why would you attempt to teach a young Earth to our children when you can't you can't convince the adults? Basically, <laughs> like you're not going to convince the adults. You know, there are some creationists out there, um, and a lot more than I care to possibly believe. However, there was an article that came out just today that says that there are more young Americans who believe in evolution than creationism. Finally, we, we, we've tipped the scale because in the most recent years, when I was a kid, I don't know about, you know, I wasn't looking at articles about this. I wasn't getting all this information. I wasn't getting a bunch of stuff that had to do with this kind of, you know, we'll call it war on science in the U.S. Um, I just accepted evolution because science is a way of you know showing us things that are true and if it's not science well then it might be a hypothetical which is fun and it's good but it's not necessarily true um and that's how i was brought up and you know i was brought up in a in a, in a christian family and i i understand a lot of those those aspects as well but the creationist young earth thing is just it, it's it's beyond me and the fact that Last year, I, I think it was like 45% of of grade schoolers believed in a creationist young earth. I just, for me, which, uh, growing, which is crazy. For, for me, I grew up in a, in, a, in a very Christian family, and but I had always rebelled from it because the ideas that I had, the ideals that I had were different from everybody else's. But for me, evolution just made sense. And I'm not saying, you know, like you and I have spoken about this before, that, that evolution is not like just this, this went here, this went here. It isn't that step process or that branch tree bullshit that they sometimes show. It's, it's a more complex process than that. But it, it makes <laughs> sense to me. And... 
what we t- were talking about at the very beginning of the show, the koi wolf. It's a, v- it's a perfect fucking example of evolution in progress. We don't know where that's leading. We don't know what the end result of that is going to be. But if we, if, if, you know, if but we if mark you it follow right now, it through to its end result, we're watching the mid. A couple of human generations, even like even two human generations, this will show us a direction in which it's heading, right? Yeah. And that's fascinating. That's the first macro, you know, like like looking at macro evolution. Like they was like, well, we've seen like evolution in. In you know the biota, the the you know, <laughs> but you've never we've never seen it in in large multi-celled animals. Well, no, here it is. And but you're going to have call, to wait they're, they're even until going your so grandchildren. Far, they're even going so far as to call it a super hybrid. Mm-hmm. You know, well, the, I do love I do I do love that. It does make sense because it does have like it it will have the best traits. It will be a little bit better because of the size than than a coyote and will be a little bit better because of the brain than a wolf so it will be a super hybrid right like it super meaning better or above like so it will be a little bit over and above the abilities of both of its predecessors which in evolutionary terms natural selection should choose that yep no matter what so so that's that's a that's gonna be our first look at okay this works but we're gonna have to wait 120 years which which i mean how many like uh, that, that's about oh, 40 you, generations you and i are never gonna like, see it you and i are, are yeah. never gonna see the end result of that but the you know but these but things, i'm gonna enjoy watching it along the way yeah right? this, the, it just you know from the fat from the point when i watched that documentary and we did that show until now where all of a sudden I've been seeing all these articles with uh, the koi wolf, the super hybrid is taking over the Northeast. It uh, numbers in the millions. Like, yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. is highly adaptable. It can live in either urban, uh, rural or, or natural environments. It's big enough to take down a deer and it's small enough to hide to where you can't see it to take they, down your they, cat. They are, that will they win. They are big enough to take down a moose in packs. That would be crazy. And think about that. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, the, and, they're, and like you were saying, they're going to have the higher intelligence. They're, they're sleeker. The, the, but they're larger. It, <laughs> like, uh, it just it, it it it's fascinating and it's fascinating to watch. It's scary. I mean, because like we were talking about earlier, the introduction of the dog DNA in there has definitely made them less afraid of humans. And now they they you're starting to get some reports of them attacking human beings. Oh, but you you were bringing up an interesting thing about that too about the the the, the domestic dog being in, bred in there. I mean that that's a huge aspect of that too. I <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> so I mean, what is the, the 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 underlying theme of why people want to believe in a young Earth? And when I'm talking about a young Earth, I'm not talking about a, a billions year old year Earth. Earth. I'm talking about an earth that is 30,000 years old wasn't here prior to and just popped into existence, you know, um, or I've played, I've played sim earth, David. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Happens overnight. (laughs) Just leave the computer running. No. Um, so, so to, to, to take that pill and to go down that rabbit hole, you have to accept the conspiracy that science even though science isn't a thing science doesn't have any politics science doesn't have any anything science just passes the inf- the passes the tests through their process and and provides the information the conspiracy happens on the other aspect of it where somebody is trying to convince you that there is a conspiracy knowing that we are all so apt to we, we love a conspiracy as a as a as a culture as a species we need something to be afraid of and we need something bigger than us to be afraid of 
right? So that it makes total sense, and that's it gets me right into like the perfect segue into the the, the anti vaxxers right? So we've all been putting vaccines into our bloodstream. We we inoculate our our children, our animals, and everything, and everything, and everything, and then all of a sudden, what about? Jenny McCarthy ago, um, it becomes a big deal. People are not inoculating their children against diseases that are so much more horrible than anything that you could be putting into their systems that it, it, it boggles my mind. And it's based on not science. It's based on a conspiracy and some correla correlations that people can make out of Facebook and out of blogs. Now, I was looking online, and I think I've figured it out. Well, yeah, I did that for a long time, and I figured out the Sasquatch was real, and then I figured out the Sasquatch wasn't real. <laughs> you know, like, or, you know, w w whatever whatever that is. You know, the more you look into something, the more it becomes truth. <clears throat> and then the more you live in that and step take a step back then you realize oh i was full of shit but how do i how do i get out of this one um so the the, the anti the anti-vaxxers are are it, it's amazing to me that they would rather not put a small amount of you know uh, chemicals it's full of chemicals like formaldehyde and this that and the other okay did you know that that there's 10 times more formaldehyde in the flesh of an apple do you know that formaldehyde is a component of the plasma in your blood? And that's why it doesn't turn and spoil. You know, like these are like things that nobody takes into account. They're just looking at, oh, this is a scary word. This is a scary word. Um, and those are pretty much uh, there's mercury in there. Well, yeah, but have you eaten a tuna fish sandwich lately? You've eaten and so, way more mercury. <laughs> So I understand that, okay, well, this all goes through your digestive system, you know, the things I'm talking about, eating, and and, and that's what you have a liver for, and, and when you put it directly in the bloodstream, it can affect your, wait, 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 vac vaccines and autism, wait, it goes into your blood, and then, wait, the blood-brain barrier, doesn't, isn't that a thing, isn't that a thing, where you can't get medication or chemicals into your brain through your bloodstream and we've been trying forever to do this like people with brain tumors we have to dig them out because we can't get the right medicine into their brain because of this barrier the reason that we get intoxicated from alcohol of all the beer that i've been drinking is because <laughs> the alcohol bonds to the oxygen in your blood and starves <gasps> your brain amongst other things and it releases dopamine and all these other things you know well, yeah. whatever whatever all that is uh, but but it you know so y your brain loses fluid because it's a diuretic and and you don't get enough oxygen which is the only thing that your brain like a hundred percent needs to survive is oxygen because when you're suffocating that's when you're going to die first um or if your heart stops and you can't get oxygen to your brain that's when you're going to actually die you're going to be aware that your heart stops and it's going to take a second for you to die which is scary but the one thing that you can't do is put mercury into your blood and have it go into your brain and cause autism because that's not how it works it's genetic disorder and guess what the anti-vaxxers recently funded a huge study it was a it was a million dollar study to show the link between vaccines and autism and that study of course because of science and the fact that they will not spread bullshit said no there is no link between vaccines and autism there never was and there never will be and anybody that ever said that there was is a shill and they're not using the scientific method properly Ta -da! I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to be taking up my next career path as a snake oil salesman. Um, mm. <laughs> I th oh, I think it could I think it could well, go which, really well, David. Which gets me to my next. Oh, did I just give you, you the assist? The the assist, the segue, the homeopathy gets a reality check in the UK. Yes, yes. So th this whole like supportive homeopathic remedy. That, so. Basically, we've already said that, you know, homeopathy is not the way to go. It's not going to happen. But all these people who are are still invested in, you know, the homeopathic but remedies what if say, I well, want to shove supplement. Kale, but what if I want to shove kale up my ass? If you took antibiotics <laughs> and shoved kale up your ass, there was a new study that came out 
recently that has said that the kale does nothing, but the antibiotics will uh, save your life. <laughs> um, and and brings me back to this 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 conspiracy and this 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 cultish aspect of like the raw fooders and all of this stuff. And there's a, a gentleman by the name of David Wolf on on the interwebs and on Facebook. So it's talking about. You know, I'll, I'll, let's just read a couple things off of this Facebook. Why don't we? Like, so yesterday at 6.33 a.m., anxiety is now the most commonly diagnosed mental illness in the country. I am not sure that that's true, but okay, whatever. When you don't get enough oxygen, the brain receives a danger signal, dot, 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 no space. But this, all caps, ancient technique can help reduce stress and anxiety without popping pills. On DavidWolf.com. That's Wolf with an E. Um, David Avocado Wolf. He changed his middle name to Avocado because of the restorative powers of Avocado. Oh, Hashtag avocado. sells Avocado. It's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's, it's bland. Good in my flavorless. sushi, uh, David. I like it in my sushi. Yeah. So... <laughs> There, there, uh, basically, this guy goes through and, and po posts all these feel-goody things... But what he's really trying to do, what he's really trying to do overall is get you to link back to his home page, which is a page where he will sell you subscriptions to his plan of raw food and to where if you subscribe to his plan, he will show you a better way of living. And I want to have a better way of living, David. All sorts. Yes, yes, yes. But David... Don't well, you fine. want then to you have can, a better way of living, too? Then, then you can pay $54 a month to get David Wolf to uh, give you a Wolf cert certification um, and, uh, you know, show you how to live a better life through When we're done with food. that, can we get the Tony Robbins uh, homeopathy and stuff? And he will <laughs> cure your panic attacks by pressing on your nose. Be dialing, anyway. people! <laughs> So th th all of the you know all these conspiracies and all of this stuff and all of this war on science basically to me boils down to the the fact that it it it, it is fueled by the same urges and the same rhetoric as the war on Christmas that Starbucks is allegedly waging waging by having a blank red cup because. They've taken Jesus out of their cup, which I don't know what a snowflake has to do with Jesus necessarily, because there was no manger, there was no crucifix, there was no anything. Uh, but taking a snowflake off of, off of a red cup apparently is waging war on Christmas and war on Jesus Christ. And this is where a lot of that, that, that same hype that goes along with, oh, we have to fight against the scientists. We have to fight against... You know, evil corporations like Monsanto, you know, by the way, Whole Foods net profited more than uh, Monsanto last year. Uh, <laughs> you know, so like the, the, it's 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 a very, very touchy subject. There's, you know, there's a bunch of scientists trying to make foods that uh, that'll work for us when, you know, GMOs haven't been studied. If we want them labeled, that's a different subject, but they're not trying to control or get uh, or give people cancer. They're doing things in a way that they are controlling the fact that we're going to be eating this food, right? <laughs> and they're controlling. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, Monsanto makes their their vegetables resistant to toxic chemicals that kill the bees." Well, that's sort of true because it would be resistant to that chemical, but nobody uses that chemical anymore because it's toxic to bees. <laughs> like, so you have to take a step back and like look at these sort of things in a pragmatic way and make your decisions. And a blank red cup with a couple, uh, maybe you know, Christmas tags on the side might still be Christmas oriented if you take a look deeper and you don't read Facebook fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, rant over <laughs> the war on science. Uh, I, I myself, uh, I don't see the issue with a fucking goddamn red cup. Um, you cannot please people. You seriously can't. Because if you put fucking Merry Christmas on the goddamn thing, you're gonna piss somebody else off. 
if you put everything on there, you're going to piss everybody off in some way, somehow, some form. I just don't even give a fuck anymore. Listen, people. What was, Christmas- with, what was wrong with snowflakes? It's it, it was it was a winter theme by removing the snowflakes and just having the red, which apparently red is a it's is a, a stolen thing. fucking holiday anyway. It's it, a fucking red, stolen red came holiday from the Coca Cola aspect of it. So I, anyway, <laughs> yeah, fuck it, fuck it. Look at yeah, look look at it at an, in a pragmatic way. Take a step back and and look to the left, look to the right, top and bottom, and you'll probably find that what you're looking at in the center is total bullshit. Yeah, and that, and that's the end. <laughs> and and kudos bars, David. Mm. Let's not forget those. Well, kudos to the yeah, yeah. Like the ones with the M and M's. Those are pretty fun. Yes. This has been episode ninety-seven of the Forty and Slip, the War on Science episode. Um, if you like this shit, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't, hit the little thumbs down button. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe share this shit around people share it share it everywhere share it with your grandmother um don't share it with like kids anybody under no, anybody not. under 18 no we, i'm not comfortable um well maybe 17 because they can watch showgirls but yeah nc17 yeah uh, share this shit around um, and go to dreadfun.com and youtube.com forward slash dreadfun. Have a wonderful evening.